it was interesting everybody then was doing secular mm-hmm. but uh, as a group we were determined we were like us guys are doing gospel and nothing else and you can't tell us anything and we were stubborn about that mm-hmm. You know, there's no way you're going to change us to do secular. How? For who? Mm-hmm. Why? No way. I mean, we used to go to the studio there. We meet all these superstars. Nini, we're like, yeah, good for you. But sisi, tutara kuimpia mungu. But when the group broke up, um, I think I was probably insecure about pursuing it on my own. Mm. And uh, because of that, I started weighing my options. Okay. Um, when you're out there, there's something that you're really searching for that you will never find and again and again and again you won't find it you know mm-hmm. some go out there searching for love that maybe watakutana na mse flani nini and their life will change that man that will marry you really comes from the club okay. yes and actually the one who led me to through the sinner's prayer was my mom my mom is wow. a pastor so Your mom is I, a pastor yes she is and you are a pastor's kid uliko na zunguko kote well she got ordained much later but anyway <laughs> or rather she yeah <laughs> yeah so what really happened is that when i when i decided to accept jesus and I actually accept for me nini mo accept yeah. yeah um i called my mom and of course she obviously led me through the sinner's prayer mm. um with my dad they were both quite excited and my mom was like the one was really excited and she was like <sighs> she's like that is the longest battle i have fought wow So all this time your mama has been praying for you. Yeah. She said that um is the longest battle I've ever fought. Mama wa ngoni ku. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, bigger than everything my God is bigger. fresh and classic hits 24 you are listening to the reset where we reset our lives back to a sustainable pace back to the pace that god has always wanted and being on thursday it's all about testimony thursday and like i promised you uh, tonight we'll be having none other than amani and i'm so glad to have her and actually she's right and she's live here in studio but meanwhile i want you guys to plug in remember we're broadcasting on 96.9 fm that is our frequency or as well you can stream or even watch live on w www.palradio.co.ke and remember if you missed any testimony uh, make sure to always go to our youtube channel that is at pal digital ke and you get to subscribe and you can be able to uh, catch a sneak peek of it anyways but without much further ado my guest already live in studio allow me just to introduce her yes amani how are you i'm very well thank you i'm good oh karibu sana asante sana oh my goodness you're glowing i thank god you know um <laughs> <laughs> can only be him <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that to be able to to come through thank you to share your story with us thank you so much for Amani, having me Amani Amani you know the, la- the la- okay let me let me confess this you know mm-hmm. before before I, go- I got born again mm-hmm. we used to be on the other side yes <laughs> <laughs> and I can really tell that indeed God has really worked on you you're Amen. still looking at that young lady still I what is the secret God. I think it's just God. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is um God and more God and more God. I think the more you stay in his presence, the more you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. impact his goodness on you. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't really say that it's any of my goodness. Of course the Holy Spirit leads you and lets you know maybe if you're eating certain things at a kukula. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah nice. Mm. I think you're going to give us that car. <laughs> Get some tips. Yeah. But anyways, Amani. Uh Amani is Amani your real name or on your ID? No, okay. No, it's not. Uh-huh. Uh my real name on my ID is is Cecily Patricia. Mhm. Why Jimo? Mm-hmm. So, um growing up I realized that people have a problem at the program. Mm. Now you know where I was from. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> where I am from. Yeah. I realized that people have a problem pronouncing the name Cecily. And um with time it became Cecilia, you know, but then again now when they look at like my documents are like Cecily, I'm like yeah, that's that's the name on my on all my legal documents. And uh yeah, I thought to myself, man, if if growing up it was a problem guys to pronounce Cecily. Mm-hmm. So if I have that as, you know, 
an artist name then people are going to just have a they forget me they will like will uh, them see at well you see see yeah, you you see you see you see we are them <laughs> so i decided uh, and also um like i said I was i'd planned to be a gospel artist so i thought yeah i need a name that you know yeah and the money is what i chose wow mm-hmm. a money piece yes peace yeah. very important <laughs> <laughs> a piece anyways i think we, we have grown up to know that word has been very very famous for how many decades now um i'd say two decades two decades yeah ah, that's amazing god has mm. kept you amen has preserved you amen and anyways but tonight we just want to hear your story so even as we start off like a man your background where have you been raised where are you coming from like as in you know childhood where were you raised and where were you born i was born in nairobi but later on my parents moved to fika so i was raised in fika it was a deliberate decision that my parents made that they don't want to raise their children in nairobi so we went to fika then it felt like ushago cuz mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know yeah mm-hmm. i don't know that yeah. we didn't have a super highway it was yeah. just a highway and it was far so but um now that i'm a grown up i really appreciate i appreciate the sacrifice that they made to bring us up in fika mm-hmm. because it was very idyllic and um yeah I actually have um, good childhood memories. And how many are you in your family? We are three. Uh-huh, you're the I'm the, fa- the eldest. Ah, yes. yeah. Indeed. <laughs> it can't tell. Yeah. So how how is life now being raised in Tika because you guys were so used to in Nairobi and then to transition to that particular area? Um it was a bit different. Mm. In Nairobi when a neighborhood I had neighbors and kona jana na maybe flani or flani na ishi pale and everything you could go see them. I remember I used to have a lot of sleepovers like over the weekend. Um neno na lala siju kwa kina nani because it was it was it was like a community and everything. But when we moved to Tika we had no neighbors so we had to sort of like bond me my sister and my brother play amongst ourselves um the positive thing is that you know when you go out a little bit out of town you have a bit of compound and everything so yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how was schooling there it was also quite interesting mm-hmm. um <laughs> this was a funny thing i've come from nairobi nimezoya kuongea kiswahili when i went to thika um <laughs> I was that girl who let them know on Gangak so everyone else was speaking English. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And some will, will actually term it like hey um dem ana ana twang sana. I wait. Then as you know, will kwanga ile dem anongia Kiswahili cuz all the other kids were speaking English. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to catch up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how now um you know how were you uh, which which actually which primary school and high school did you attend in, back in Thika? I went to Moy Academy Thika. Mm-hmm. Then it was like a very a nice um the school had just been started so it was quite intimate and nice um very nice primary school I have to say. Mm-hmm. And after that I went to high school in Karatina mm-hmm. at Bishop Gatimo Gandu Girls. Very different and um yeah. It was quite different but mm-hmm. uh I've also come to appreciate a few factors about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And while growing up now uh because uh, uh it's good to, uh, for, for for us to know that uh were you raised in a in a Christian uh, yes, family? Uh-huh. I was raised in a Christian home. Mm-hmm. My mom got born again quite early. I don't have a lot of memories of my mom not being born again. Very few. In fact, for my sister and my brother, they don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have, I don't think when I'm driving. Uh-huh. Um but I have a few to snippets over here of her when she was not born again um my dad got born again much later i think when i was um in high school i uh, was just about to finish high school that's when my dad got born again mm. so for the better part it was my mom who was born again but then again the values had to be christian we got dragged everywhere like we can do najikutoko church um yes we were i i literally accompanied my mom to all her weekend activities so i have memories of going for fem meetings with my mom uh then the, it was a women fellowship fem began as a women fellowship and i remember i used to go for their meetings i think in tika they used to meet every second saturday of the month or something like that mm-hmm. and i was there throughout I, as in it was at the hall at the town hall and i knew that town hall like the back of my hand <laughs> because i used to play outside there mm-hmm. and apart from that um there was a church that my mom was part of part of like um beginning destiny worship center i remember bishop mbai 
uh, then he was passed on by and yeah attending church like three services thicker christian center yes bishop mm-hmm. mulandi yeah that was my environment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so would you say that you are a good girl you are not a rebellious girl back then <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> yes. you forget that the reason why my parents moved from nairobi <laughs> was because of who <laughs> me uh-huh. um according to my parents i had started being very notorious mm-hmm. um around six years old and um they actually gave me a warning that if you don't change um you know this and this will happen all manner of things in fact the threat that given me was that I would change schools so what i did is that term i nearly summer nearly summer nearly summer because i was i was not bothered with books i remember i was in class 1 or something like that you know grade 1 i think now mm-hmm. that's what yeah was it grade 1 i don't know the one that guys go in there 6 years 7 years yeah. and i remember vividly like really doing my best in my studies just to make sure that i'm not changed to another school little did i know my parents were changing everything school home the full works yeah yeah wow yeah. so actually all this changing of school is because of your rebellious you know um i had misbehaved mm. and my mom was uncomfortable mm. about me being raised in Nairobi first of all she was working in Thika so she used to leave very early and come back very late my dad uh, is a hotelier so he worked in the hotel business which meant that even him he leaves extremely early and comes back home quite late so um that's why i say i appreciate the decision that they made mm. they made a decision that okay fine we have busy careers however uh for our kids at least to see us yeah. during the day mm-hmm. uh at some point oh, we probably need to change mm-hmm. yeah and now when when uh you know when you actually completed high school what did you decide to pursue because people have known you as a as an artist <laughs> but was that really what you wanted to pursue i'm actually what were you pursuing as your career my career i've always been attracted to marketing and advertising um still still i i still love everything to do with marketing and advertising and um that's what i studied in campus i went to campus at usiu where i studied international business administration with a major in marketing mm-hmm. and yeah yes i was awesome mm-hmm. yes <laughs> <laughs> wow. i loved yes i you i have to say that mm-hmm. um I came from high school which was like strict. I mean Gandu was a very very strict high school. You know, wake up at this time, read at this time, do this at this time as in it was just clockwork all the time, instructions left right and center. It was a very strict school. Um there are positives about that, but then again, um there are negatives about that in the sense that um at that point in time you need to give a level of independence. Mm-hmm. to an individual to actually choose certain things and when i went to high school i mean when i went to campus i realized that in campus i can choose when i want to have my classes i can choose what time i want to have my classes and i can even choose which lecturer that i want mm-hmm. so that freedom was refreshing for me the fact that i could choose and um most people will say no 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 don't give people that freedom but i think Um at that age by the time you're in campus you're just about to go into the real world it's important it's, it's important that you need to exercise some independence mm-hmm. and in fact I believe that independence should start from when you're very very young yeah because then it builds your character and it makes you more responsible mm-hmm. yeah and at what point now did you uh start actually realize that you have the gift of even singing, singing because, that was a long yeah. time ago mm-hmm. it's my mom uh-huh. <clears throat> I remember When I was young I was singing in the backyard and um my mom kept telling me turn down the radio why you turn down the radio ah and she kept saying it and I'm thinking what is she talking about so she came out and she's like why you I have told you so many times to put that radio down and I tell her mommy it's not the radio and she's like what and I'm like it's me then her demeanor changed mm-hmm. she's like it's you you're wow. singing you can sing so she became intrigued yeah. <laughs> even though like number one fan from the one <laughs> so she became intrigued and she's like oh you can sing mm-hmm. so she was you know she was happy about that and every time you went for a birthday party she's like yeah she'll sing happy birthday for you guys so she started putting me on the spot several times during birthday parties and even in church she started encouraging me to you know participate in the christmas presentations is a bit of a wow so when actually did you start now taking it seriously that you know i want to pursue this as a 
as, as a career now, music? It wasn't until I finished high school mm-hmm. and um, I just felt this passion and drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see mm-hmm. what would come out of it. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure that it would become a profession or a career, but I just wanted to see mm-hmm. what is going to come out of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because you mentioned that uh, you're from a Christian background, but now yes. when you start off your musical career, you didn't start off as a gospel artist. So what really happened? You know, I started off as a gospel you as a gospel artist i was even in a gospel group in high school uh-huh. and when we finished we kenda to ka record ka record data na ted desired at that time they were like the producer uh-huh. and um you know we we ended up not staying together because guys had to go to campus and everything it was at that time nilikuwa na ingia campo now when you're doing this gospel song with uh, kina ted were you born again yeah so what actually made you go born again in as much i know you're raised from a christian background but at what point did you say that you know what i want to live for god i think it started from when i was very young mm-hmm. um the whole singing thing i think from when i was 10 the one thing that has always drawn me is i enjoy just singing to god mm-hmm. i actually enjoyed from when i was really young and i wanted to desire more i just rather i desired more so even when i got born again in camp in high school not really miss kwanga at a serious mm. christian mm. high school mm-hmm. it was maybe after high school i yoyoed a little bit but i really wanted to stick to it yeah. um in primary school for the better part i really really wanted to stay there and be a born again girl mm-hmm. so yeah so now you have, you've been doing now these uh gospel songs like in a third just high mm-hmm. how was it and no how, how was that particular experience it was interesting everybody then was doing secular mm-hmm. but uh as a group we were determined we were like us guys are doing gospel and nothing else and you can't tell us anything and we were stubborn about that mm-hmm. you know there's no way you're going to change us to do secular how for who mm-hmm. why no <laughs> way i mean we used to go to the studio there we meet all this superstars and we were like yeah good for you but sisi tutaraka kuimpia mungu yeah but when the group broke up um i think i was probably insecure about pursuing it on my own mm. and uh because of that i started weighing my options okay it was a process because uh-huh. i remember i asked for the number um at ted studio there was a lot of traffic mm-hmm like there's so many artists that wanted to record with him and i was like hey hapa nitatoboa sio nini kitoboa like i mentioned as a bit insecure, insecure about that yeah so I, was, i met um red sun and i remember there's a song he had done with um i think baby cool from uganda mm-hmm. and i was like hey you know let's uh give me the number of the producer who produced your song yeah for options and one day i decided ah niko nimetoka campo nikasema acha nipigie mc so i called him and uh he was like oh come and i said oh i do gospel he was like no problem in fact we'll make it inspirational <laughs> <laughs> and little did i know that was the beginning of the process of yeah. the, uh-huh. mm, slowly <laughs> you know yes uh-huh. mm. so how how was now uh how now did you slowly transition now from 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 gospel now to do the inspiration the first <laughs> <laughs> inspiration cut <laughs> future singers <laughs> eh? red just, flag ukisikia okay. inspiration uh, ah just jua <laughs> <laughs> you said to me said ni mbaya like as ndiko na you can inspire kind of, what eh, eh, inspire to what una eh, vitu positive eh, eh. vitu positive just know <laughs> eh. red flag so um yeah so the first thing i actually released was an inspirational song mm-hmm. um that talked about in believing in god and believing in yourself to be successful mm-hmm. and i remember after that they were like oh the song has done very well but you know you can also do love songs love is not bad mm-hmm. you know after all god is love ala mm-hmm. <laughs> <So laughs> like i said once you hear inspiration quick bang red flag and um mm. i was like yeah i could mm-hmm. but i struggled with the fact that like writing love songs yeah cuz i thought to myself i so even as the producer i'm like so a love song yeah mm. okay all my life i was writing songs for god yeah. which i said i enjoyed so much it was so natural to me mm. i even remember for my mm. exam i did music in high school as one of my subjects mm. and even then the the song that i did for my exam for music as one of my subjects was a was a gospel song yeah 
so now this whole thing of writing love song eh hey, ni sumba and the producer was like yeah like like do you have a boyfriend i'm like yeah so you write about it i'm like ai ai we boyfriend ki awi mbapana tata jigamba sana so that was my i was like how do you write like it really bothered me mm-hmm. and to be honest for the longest time in my career i always felt like i <laughs> i don't think ni me quite ishika vile mm-hmm. yeah now so the first song that we said to do how how was the reception now from those people um, who got used to you like you do being a gospel you know gospel artist now when you started to do this secular how was the reception of that um i think when i was doing gospel not very many people knew me mm-hmm. it was mostly people within the industry mm-hmm. and even them had started off as gospel so it's like to look at una black backslide to kwa wengi yeah <laughs> <laughs> names like in a big dead big mm. kev it was like a whole to be honest all those people you saw like during that era mm. end up being in the industry and really doing big things we all started off as gospel ministers from big ted to big kev mm-hmm. wahoo Mm-hmm. in the church and everything why i mean all those guys ah watu walikuwa kwa church wote walikuwa kwa church wote so mimi na watu na and slowly drift kaingia tu kwa hiyo story okay some alab in your trend eh twende tunayo wow and now uh, your mom yes. because your mom and your my girl ni ni mzuri anembanga gospel ni okoka ni memories kwa kanisa but here I think she could see if there's anything I've never really been um how do I put it My relationship with my mom has never been pretentious mm. at all like if you tell her very much she'll be like yeah I know she did that like <laughs> it just has it has never been like that you know mm-hmm. so even as I was busy doing this thing she could tell and she was just warning me she's like very much way way I can see where you're going and I don't like it mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to look at her and I keep quiet, mm-hmm. you know. And you know, eventually she knew that I wasn't really doing gospel. By then I was probably in my second third year in campus. So it was a bit hard to control me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now in the in the secular world now. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you did? Uh, in terms of <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> because we know the secular world is not that uh, at hey hallelujah and all that yes i mm-hmm. think because of my christian background i was a bit two things my christian background and then two being raised in thika there's some things i found strange like i'll be like why guys are doing that yeah and i'm like hey okay you know i found certain things kuna ushamba flani nilikuwa nayo kuna vitu zilikuwa zinani shock so I was very wary and I used to tread very carefully about certain things. Did I go out? Yeah, I was in campus. In fact, no. Yes, ni kwa campo. Legit, let's go out. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um but even as I was clubbing, I was still a little careful. Did I, you know, do things like a campus girl? Of course. So what are these things? I mean, you go out as a campus person, you dance the whole night. Um dancing was the main thing. For me, it was just dancing and listening to the music that was my highlight of going out back then mm-hmm. um for some strange reason i never used to handle alcohol very well anybody who knew me from back then can attest to that mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i just couldn't so if you hear anybody telling you that oh sigi amadi na makali eh, no mm-hmm. it's a lie mm-hmm. those things will hit my stomach and come back out immediately yeah so i wasn't really like indulging that much when it came to that because my body couldn't handle it mm-hmm. and every time i tried it i ended up spending like maybe the rest of the night just throwing up so that's one thing my body couldn't quite handle alcohol mm-hmm. so i wasn't really like that much of a drinker there were incidences when it happened yes but nizileza nimejaribu kitu sijazoea and yeah so you never into drugs into drinking i never touched a drug mm-hmm. yeah and also because you mentioned about her you mentioned about her boyfriend yes so how was that also um contrary to popular belief i was in a long term relationship from when i was probably 16 mm-hmm. or 14 to when i was about 25 26 for 10 years mm-hmm. yeah 10 years yes <laughs> <laughs> that guy must be very very patient with you <laughs> <laughs> quite the opposite <laughs> <laughs> why can't what happened um 
I think we were at a stage in our lives where I mean honestly mm. um for him I think the change of seeing me change from this girl that he knew in high school as myself mm-hmm. you know from thika siko na mambo mingi in fact most of the things that I got to learn he's the one who introduced me to them he's one who introduced me to like going out and everything yes in campus I went out with uh, with my friends but at the Ilesa club proper mm-hmm. it was him mm-hmm. because me I didn't know those things there was this girl from thika mm-hmm. and um now having to share me with the world ah hiyo kitu haikuwa na mbamba yeah because you are a celeb now ai and then you know when you speak past dream nini ai hiyo kitu i he never he just could not handle it yeah mm-hmm. so that then there began the drift you know in the whole relationship plus many other things you know the way you are in campo and in high school is not the way you are as a grown up mm-hmm. and we had grown up mm-hmm. so that became a bit tough and uh, yeah we went our separate ways mm-hmm. yeah. okay you need character development but it's <laughs> it's, it's it, it was working for your good yeah. but you mentioned about because i know uh, sometimes people have not never experienced the world mm-hmm. they think it's fun and probably how will you describe it now uh, the clubbing life you know you know because i've been doing this for 10 years you know so how will you describe it like was it um, was it fun i don't know um for me like i said it was the music it was the dancing but even at that um when you're out there there's something that you're really searching for that you will never find but and again and again and again you won't find it you know mm-hmm. some go out there searching for love that maybe utakutana na msi flani nini and their life will change that man that will marry you really comes from the club does it happen maybe it does yeah it does happen mm-hmm. you know there have been those instances where guys have met in the club and everything mm-hmm. but more often than not no yeah it doesn't quite happen there yeah um this is a person who wants to spend the rest of their life your their, their lives with you and the same for you so mm-hmm. 90% of the time as a human being people tend to make those decisions yeah. outside that setting. Mm-hmm. And um even in terms of the music and everything mm-hmm. there's just you won't get that ka feeling you get with, with Christian music. Haizi haizi fikia. Yeah. Ni entertainment. Haizi fikia. Yeah. Because I think people have termed it as you know what uh uko kuna you know at the Christian life is boring the life in the world at least kuna kujibamba and all that. Is that particular you know uh, you know notion I think when you're younger mm-hmm. you are curious you really want to go out there and experience it yeah. but even if you don't get born again after some time that whole thing becomes tired mm-hmm. you're tired like how many times are you going to go out yeah you know how many drinks are you going to drink mm-hmm. you get some say it yeah. becomes tired it's no longer exciting and um That's why I say it's just it's una una put us to akati because you'll finally realize it's exhausting it's tiring and it's not adding that much value to your life mm-hmm. and you just need to let go of it. Yeah. But when it comes to, to Christianity it's value add throughout. Mm-hmm. So the choice is yours. Yeah. Can't take a quest time. Sorry. Before we actually reach a point of transition, you know, off mic we were talking about how in as much you are in the world you still there's some areas you know you could not compromise. Mm-hmm. You know like when I talk about gig flan and I say ma uku CND <laughs> <laughs> like I yeah. way Yeah I remember there was one gig I was called for mm-hmm. and it was a swingers gig mm-hmm. and I don't know they were having their annual party Yeah and they decided that man ndio atawatumbuiza first me ni catch I'm like how dare you think that I'm a candidate for you <laughs> <laughs> for your shenanigans yeah. I was pissed off mm-hmm. so even as the person who called me was telling me about it mm-hmm. I was upset nikuwa na mlekta I don't I'm not like that yes I know I'm not married but I value marriage marriage is important to me and I'm like how why me you know I really felt insulted to mm-hmm. be honest mm-hmm. and that's because um like I said I value marriage and uh, my parents have been married till to to date for 43 years then um, back then maybe we had been married for maybe like 30 32 years and mm-hmm. everything so mm-hmm. i'd seen marriage work yeah now um, this guy is calling me at your only swingers on our corner party mm-hmm. end of year i don't was end of year i think it was an end of year party or something mm-hmm. and 
now even when he called me again i was even more pissed off so yeah. now even that conversation did not go very well yeah but after that um i was very disappointed i was like why yani nimefika level ambayo ambayo yani swingers wana nita and then hey shwali i have really gone hey anime hey i've really failed <laughs> this is where we are at mm-hmm. yeah Wow. And now uh because you you actually ventured into secular music and you know for 10 years. Yes. So all these 10 years, you know, uh, 15 actually. It's 15 years, yeah. yeah. 15 years. Mm. So at you know at what point did you see ukasema ulifika ukasema you know what me I'm, I'm tired with this I, I want to change and you know I want to live for God. What actually what really happened at what point? I started getting quite uh, tired early. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> people didn't know this but i was getting tired quite early and um i was just strategizing and thinking how do i get out it was i contemplated it for a very long time mm-hmm. and after contemplating i think it just reached a point i was like i can't do this anymore it had just become a profession for me everything was very mundane you know you wake up you go you do your gig i had my schedule okay fine weekend ikifika unaenda unafanya gig unamaliza it was just a profession i was there was no passion nothing was there mm-hmm. and on top of that you know just things were happening you know like even after that you had a phone call of singers calling you and i'm like hey yeah. lord have i sunk this low surely <laughs> <laughs> in the pursuit of this music thing eh? yeah. this is where we are at mm-hmm. um Yeah and you start wondering now how do I get back because this this is not making sense to me anymore and I just had a desire to just um have that fellowship with God and I remember even in my spare time um the music that I was listening to was the music that I loved which was gospel music hill song and everything um I love listening to Darling Shack for those of you who know Darling Shack. Yeah. Old school classic like in beautiful music. Mm-hmm. And um that's the music that I was listening to and it was so ilikuwa ni bamba sana. It was so beautiful and I was like wow. This is when it made sense. And that's when I started to just contemplating I'm, I'm actually going to get born again so and I wanted to just yeah go back to Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what really happened on that fateful day? actually planned it so i said i'm going to get born again and i'm going to go and join bible school so that akuna kurudi unajiona decide nitaokoka i'll accept jesus and then things mm-hmm. happened during that day maybe at a phone call and then you had a gig for weekend yeah. it was a hard thing for me to decide because my the music was my career most of the times people get born again their career remains the same if you're a doctor you go back na tibu watu if you're probably working in an organization you still go back into that organization nothing much changes for you yeah. but for me it was like literally life changing if i made that decision there was no way i could go back mm-hmm. So I decided to join Bible school and I remember like um I accepted Jesus in my my room all by myself I told mm. God I'm done Jesus I accept you come into my life you know the full works and I remember I wept and just continued to worship and I called the dean at uh the church when is chapel and i told him um i'm joining bible school he was excited so when i went you know i went through the whole procedure you know mm-hmm. bible school believers and all that um yeah and that's where it started so, i went to bible school mm-hmm. yeah for how many years not for years mm-hmm. it was for a couple of i think weeks or months mm-hmm. just going through learning the word I realized I thought I knew but I did not know. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to refresh my memory. You know, just get back that love. I remember being in class and guys were looking at me like, "Who let you in?" Do you know like this one's of does it didn't know you're here? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they know you from Exactly. Christians can be very funny. I look at you like, "Does it didn't know you're here?" Okay. Uh, why are you here you know mm. but in my head i'm like yes i am here <laughs> and i am learning just like you're learning yeah yes yeah and, and i know because you had friends also on, mm-hmm. on the secular side so when you made this decision to get born again mm-hmm. how how actually were they reacting to this news um i think most of them thought it was like a career move 
Mm-hmm. You know, people would think oh it's her career move. That's that's what she has decided to do maybe for longevity or more hits and everything. Most people thought it was a career move. But for me it was a personal decision. It was not a career move. And that is why I think when people realized that I wasn't really aggressively releasing music as a gospel artist mm-hmm. is because for me it was a life decision. It was not a career move. And um I pursued um basically my business i made a commitment to growing it and that now became where i was focusing on as i grew in the world and everything mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you mentioned about the first experience from the reception especially with people who will go <laughs> class now <laughs> but now on the on the on the on the other side the society now mm-hmm. because people who are new amani as a secular artist now mm-hmm. how about people now actually now getting in terms that oh amani got born again I think um for 2 years I was uh, silent. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really on the scene. Like I said it wasn't a career move. So I wasn't like eager to release music. I wasn't eager to announce so that when I release a song you know 1 2 3 so I took time. Like I said I went to Bible school. I took time to grow in the word. I had a group of women who we used to pray together with. Amazing women. Mm-hmm. Um they know themselves I'm sure they're listening or if they are you know if they're listening yeah hello guys <laughs> <laughs> Um amazing women um we just used to meet and pray with mm-hmm. and that just became like the guys I was growing with for two years so after two years I announced that um I'm born again and of course you know ah oh, what happened <laughs> that whole thing Yeah I found Christ that's what happened wow. but it had been 2 years you know those speculations oh you but here two weeks but here one month and, and I'm like ha ha shock on you and by the how how did your mom actually even when, when you told, did you tell your mom when you got born again yes and actually the one who led me to through the sinner's prayer was my mom my mom is wow. a pastor so your mom is I, a pastor yes she is and you are a pastor's kid ulikuwa unazunguka kote Well, she got ordained much later, but anyway. <laughs> or rather she yeah. Yeah. So what really happened is that when I when I decided to accept Jesus and I actually accept for me nini mu accept yeah. Um I called my mom and of course she obviously led me through the sinner's prayer mm. um with my dad. They were both quite excited and my mom was like the one was really excited and she was like <sighs> It's like that is the longest battle I have fought. Wow. So all this time your mom has been praying for you. Yeah. She said that um is the longest battle I've ever fought. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Squeezy the What? back in the day my mom used to call me quite often like she'd mm. call me in the morning, she'd call me in the evening. How are you? What are you doing? like I very much these things I'm not comfortable you know she you could tell she was very uneasy about 90% of the stuff so she could call me every day squeezy ah I did can go by two days I got to saw hey you're still okay yeah ah we thank god tick Zileza hey yeah because I remember one of the statements yeah. she made and I was like really was it that bad was uh, in Kikuyu mm. she said hey nani wa dengeri ya kahida Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know what you mentioned is so so uh, profound and it's so so encouraging that your mom has been very persistent and persuasive of you. Yes. You know, and I think if we could all embrace that as Christians, then we can win many souls. Yes. Because most of us we, get, we tend to give up like ah we are till much here to dunia. But your mom has been praying for you in the back door and at this faithful day to come, you know what? I want to live for this Jesus. She never gave up never gave up and the lesson that i learned from her is mm. you should never give up on your children ever that is a battle you fight mm. and never ever stop fighting yeah yeah wow that is a money for you <laughs> it's a wonderful wonderful story so i want to know uh, uh because actually you've been going through all this trans i want to know um at the first day now you decided to to release your first song as a as a gospel artist mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i know that time i remember the first song if i can remember the title because i remember mm-hmm. even back then i was working now in a different no, media yes, station yes and i remember that song was like wow this this is so nice 
Ya kwamba sifu something. Yeah, sifu jina lake Yesu. Yeah, and yeah. I was like wow. Yani she got born again. So this is so awesome. So how how is the reception now also from people now in the gospel ministry and the gospel mm. industry and even the whole society as a whole? I think when it came to uh people in gospel mm-hmm. or rather around the gospel sphere and everything it was more like hmm we are watching cuz then um gospel music was going through a shaking and there was a lot happening you know that's the time you know guys were switching and going to secular that's the time there was a lot of controversy a lot of about a lot of gospel artists yeah like i said people viewed it in my case like a career move even despite the fact that i took time to release music yeah. um still this people are skeptical like hey zakari she's trying to you know mm-hmm. yeah so um the reception was i'd say you know i wouldn't say it was like oh open hearted like hey come so it was <laughs> like mm, we're not sure yeah. cuz there's a shaking going on mm-hmm. and um it didn't really bother me like i said i grew up in the church So I was aware of how the church can be. So I wasn't a newbie to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh because actually you had a background on I had a background church in experience. church experience. Mm-hmm. So I knew the church doesn't have to mm-hmm. be all the time nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. They can have their moments. Yeah. So yeah. Because I think uh, it's very very important for actually people to know that you know what you are raised in you know in a Christian background, mm. and I think I think this is actually what contributed mostly to you now. Even when you're you know in secular, you're still uh, you're still struggling now in you know in fitting in because you're like, yeah, I'm doing this, but uh, you know it's not really 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 my thing. Mm. So that actually that particular conviction actually is actually what drove you because uh like I mentioned earlier we were talking about this mm. that you mentioned that people were transitioning from now gospel to secular yes. but you on this other side you're from secular to <laughs> gospel uh-huh. and uh, I think there was an error there you yeah, know there's a shaking going on yeah mm. and uh I know it, the, the, the the response may not be really good but I like I mentioned earlier I want you to just to explain because Uh, this trend has been going on mm-hmm. when someone has started off well mm-hmm. you know they started off well and then in the along the way and a drift mm. so actually what really causes because some you, okay we can say some it's because of the church and all that but what would you say that is the reason why for people to even change their faith in mm. terms of even starting off as a gospel mm. a minister yeah it it can be very tricky mm-hmm. um you need one to be surrounded by people who are grounded and you need to pray um as a gospel minister i am realizing that you are at the front line of battle you cannot <laughs> you cannot be going into the battlefield if or to mm-hmm. yeah it can get hectic so it's very important one that you're surrounded by very good mentorship and also people who are around you who are praying i thank god that my mom also doubles as a mentor ah uh-huh, nice <laughs> because that way you know mm-hmm. even when i went through challenges she's the one i used to call and she's like oh it's going to get better and everything you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. And um even the people who are around me at, at that point in time like I say the women who were praying with just used to pray and just used to encourage me like oh let's pray about it let's do one two three and everything so you need that support mm-hmm. you really do need it as a gospel minister you need to have a team of people who you pray with just basically a team of intercessors that mm-hmm. intercede and travel in prayer for you because the truth is that you're going out there unenda field and if you're not ready yeah. haya <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Kwa battlefield mm-hmm. kabisa and um sometimes you know church can disappoint you and everything so like i said you do need a mentor and you do need people who pray with you so mm-hmm. that even when those disappointing times come yeah you have that support system yeah yeah and even as we uh talk about this Right now there's a people who actually still relate with you with the songs that you did when you were I know. <laughs> you know I have to admit this because most of the times I've been using mat when you pattern me pana mat and then you'll get through here. What did you achieve those songs like it amo like you guys don't know that this 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 sh- <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Um for me I'm not in that space anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'll hear it and I'll be like okay, yeah, that was that. Mm-hmm. You know. 
um, my mind has moved on to other things yeah. and that's what's important I'm not there anymore mm-hmm. it's there you can't at least start with doing it yeah. <laughs> it has happened mm-hmm. and you keep it moving mm-hmm. yeah and what will advice will you share with those people who are still out there those people actually you started with mm-hmm. i know some of them are still there yeah kuna wengine bado na yema hawajafikia ama hawaji receive so actually you know some of them even they are listening to you right now so what would you tell them and also those people who are struggling also in the world maybe they are also into this party party mm-hmm. and also into drugs and all these things so what advice would you give them i had just say um like i said mm-hmm. um it's not worth it yeah kwa Jesus ndio that's where it's at mm-hmm. yeah that's where it's really at because you'll go out there uh, first of all it's time consuming so sorry to say this but waste your time yeah um so you waste two days you waste the night you go out and you waste the day when you're recovering uh if you have a family you have less time with your family if you're working towards your career that those are hours lost towards you building your career yeah if you're a student that's work that can be put into constructive stuff and i know there's this whole notion of you know i have to experience it and everything mm-hmm. especially when you're young you're like ah lazima nipitie hizo mambo ndio at least nijue na nisizifanye baadaye but imagine there are people who i have met who never had to go through that yeah. like i said there are consequences true and those consequences you can carry them for the rest of your life those consequences can be things that can affect the rest of your life they can affect even your marriage they can affect you they 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 will kuna consequences yeah. so when you decide to take that path just know that there are consequences and consequences can be with you for the rest of your life mm-hmm. is all <laughs> I talk to you consequences bado ziko. Yeah. So it's not it's not really worth it to be honest. Um for us who've experienced it and everything, I count it all joy in the sense that I do not stand and go like oh my god mm-hmm. so you know uh, I'm not pitying myself or anything. Yeah. Um what I know is that God works those situations out for your good. It really helps me in ministry and I'm able to understand things a little bit better. Um does it mean that somebody who's never gone through it cannot understand it? No, they can. Yeah. However, like I said, consequences mm-hmm. are normal. Yeah. You don't have to try everything. Yes. No just hapana wewe wewe unatudanganya acha to test. Not to test. No. Uta test kuna consequences, yeah. you know. Sometimes those consequences can be very very dire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And uh money like currently right now uh w- what are you doing because people think like hey mbona mwenye mazao you want to hear another song from <laughs> <laughs> Music is coming mm-hmm. but currently um I'm the head of music at an organization a church actually called Regist Africa which re- uh, which stands for restoring Isaka's generation yeah. uh basically it's about yeah uh being like the isa cars mm-hmm. who knew of the times and what to do with yeah. the times mm-hmm. and currently we are basically running a program where we are just basically training worship leaders um musicians instrumentalists singers psalmists and everything about that whole thing about ministry in gospel mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. because gospel music is just not about hit songs it's just not about top songs there's a ministry part of it that is very essential which is really the core of gospel music mm-hmm. it's not entertainment it's much i mean it's healing <laughs> then much more than that yeah mm-hmm. so that's what basically um the school of david is all about and yeah I'm excited about it mm-hmm. because I always say I'm student 001. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And someone can join in if they want yes, to. Yes, you yeah. can join in I uh, for worship leaders if you have worship leaders and a worship team that you'd like to go through it. It's it's really awesome. Um I'm realizing that there's some things that I also don't even know. And even before this program started, one of the things that um was really the conviction behind this program was the fact that um while I switched and started doing secular music one of the biggest differences that I noticed is that as a musician you can have skill like I had gained experience in songwriting yeah. I had gained experience in being a musician uh for 15 years a professional musician I had experience under my belt and um that made me an effective 
musician mm-hmm. um but that cannot quite translate in gospel it's very different gospel is ministry the fact that you are an effective musician doesn't quite mean that you'll be an effective gospel minister uh-huh. when it comes to gospel it is ministry when you are singing on that stage you're evangelizing how many people get born again when you finish when you are singing on that stage you are basically inviting the presence of god yeah. you're leading people into the presence of god mm-hmm. are people able to be led to the presence of god and experience experience healing experience deliverance um experience breakthroughs that is the aim of gospel music that every time you minister people get born again people get delivered yes there's healing when the presence of god comes all manner of things happen burdens are lifted that is the purpose of gospel music mm-hmm. it's not entertainment mm-hmm. yeah and what advice actually will you give someone who is a uh starting off music as a career mm-hmm. and a cotton between should i do gospel should i do secular and maybe they don't really know uh the power and how you know this actually can influence their personal life so mm. what do you tell that particular person i i mean just go the jesus way yeah if god has called you ah he'll align everything yeah yes he always does <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The first and most important thing is have you been called as a music minister? Mm-hmm. And I think those are one of the things that uh, we will be going through even at the School of David mm-hmm. is identifying your calling and aligning it with God has for your life and your purpose mm-hmm. because you may like singing but are you called into wow. gospel ministry yes. and then there are different aspects there's a person who's called mm-hmm. into being a worship leader yeah there's someone who's probably called into being a psalmist mm-hmm. there's another one who's probably called into being a minstrel they are all different a prophetic worshipper yeah so you'll find that um the worship leader will be different from the psalmist and sometimes we always assume that the mm-hmm. worship leader can be a psalmist mm-hmm. but you'll be surprised that the worship leader is actually called for worship leading in that environment mm-hmm. and is effective in leading people to Christ and inviting the presence of God and they are actually being they actually fulfilling their calling and their mandate yeah. so it's about identifying where am i at there is a psalmist you know mm-hmm. um is the psalmist a prophetic worshipper not quite example of psalmist and prophetic worshipers um prophetic worshipper Nathaniel Bassi yes he's a prophetic worshipper yes psalmist Ada you get yes so another psalmist Christina Shusho mm-hmm. actually sings directly from the yeah. psalms <laughs> actually that was the reason why she was trending last year <laughs> exactly yeah so you find that it's good for you to identify your area of calling so mm. why go to the school of david just for you to identify this quicker yeah because you find that sometimes you may take years to identify your calling and those are years into your life mm-hmm. and years into you getting out you know and starting out in ministry yeah. i always say for everything that you want to do someone else has probably done it before so gain knowledge for them mm-hmm. so that you can have shortcuts wow yeah. Yeah, that is a good advice <laughs> <laughs> anyways if you have any question actually for money uh actually you can call me on 0701969969 because i see some of your messages coming through also text me on 0702969969 or uh, talk to us on our social media platforms on facebook on instagram and also on x at pal radio KE. I know this one is very very personal mm-hmm. and uh, but I have to ask this you know uh, because actually someone is listening is like ah money uh, is a money single is a money dating <laughs> you know can I shoot my shots I pana Nili toka kwa soko kitambo I am married uh uh-huh. I am married mm-hmm. uh, my husband is Chinasa mm-hmm. um I have a child wow I have a son uh-huh. yes nice Hey that is mm. that is awesome. Yes, and I've been married for years. Mm-hmm. We talk soko kitamu kiasi. How many years now? Ah, um, let's say we've known each other for 10 years mm-hmm. and marriage I think about 5 years yeah. Wow. 5 mm. years. Mm. I'm coming for lessons. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming for lessons. Eh? I think it should be the opposite. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank and you. Uh, and allow me just to also because I also want you to pray with us tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh there's a lot of feedback coming through. Let me just mention but a few. Uh someone saying here, mm, 
Hello, uh, good evening. I'm Mama G, but really stressed up. No one to talk to. Both of my children are not in school because of lack of school fees. I'm jobless and single. I'm also a mom of two. Probably a word of encouragement to her. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say this. Um, I was single for a very long time. Yeah. And um, actually leading up to me getting born again, I've been single for mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. That's why I took offense when I was called for a single for what? Um, swingers party because I was like, ah, what is this? Um, but I'd like to encourage her. God is a provider. Yeah. And God can provide comfort. Mm-hmm. And God never fails. We might think that he can fail, but if there's somebody who's faithful, it's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. And take it to him mm. in prayer. Yeah. And just open up. If there's anything I've learned about prayer, it's about being honest. Mm. Just open up. If there's anything, that thing called fervent prayer is often honest. Yeah. It's about how just open up. My encouragement to her is just go and open up to your father Mm. because he loves you and he will listen. He hears. Open up and tell him the real truth from your heart and tell him, Daddy, I don't have this. I don't have food and I don't have that. And I'm telling you, he hears. Open up and cry out to him Mm -hmm. from the depth of your heart. He hears. If there's anybody also who you can tell your deepest, darkest secrets and open up and he'll never tell anybody it's God. True. So, he's the best person. Mm. Not friends. Just go pour out your heart to God, believing and trusting that he'll come through for you. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe that God will come through because he never fails. Amen. 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 And also, I see this is Shadi. Anna Sema. Say hi to Amani. Hello. I knew her back then to the Kutana ah. in Carnival. That oh is my because. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shadi. <laughs> Shwali. <laughs> As a man, cooperative Jumbo Junior Club. Mm. Uh, Kweli God can choose you uh, for his kingdom regardless of where you are. So, glory to God. So, <laughs> Shadi, you could have done I think it was a concert they had organized for mm-hmm. um, Cooperative Bank for Jumbo, mm-hmm. Jumbo Junior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was back in the days. I was back in the day. Gigging. Shadi, you have a story. Come on, Gig life. You have a story. Anyways, also someone saying, yeah, hello, Israel. Please tell Amani to call me. I'm going through a lot. I uh, just need someone I can talk to. Uh, it's a humble request, please. So I think we're going to see if, what we can do about this. Um also someone saying here um hi i didn't have a job but god gave me one but uh, i am too slow in doing things so it's a flower com- uh, flower company and all they do is just to check performance please pray for god to intervene in my life and to give me strength to stand strong and also uh to earn a living for myself and my three boys i'm um, rose from juja select one and also uh hello uh, number uh, Imani, not, okay, okay. We want to teach a number, okay. Uh, and I could join worship team. Mm. Yes, yeah, and I could join worship team. Yeah, that's actually what she said. I think okay. I, you're going to give them details on how they get to be part of that group. Um, I think for you to basically join um, the School of David, mm-hmm. you will go to Rig East Africa Facebook page. That's mm-hmm. R I G E A. Mm-hmm both on instagram and on facebook and the details about the school of david are there yeah. talk about your details and everything and then follow instructions mm-hmm. yeah and one final one here uh, some are very interesting listening to amani i didn't know that she was a born again before <laughs> i had always known her as a secular artist then she got born again i thought she, it was her first time so it's wow it's uh, your story is an inspiration to many young upcoming gospel artists and god bless Amen. God bless him too. Okay, but even before you pray, even as mm-hmm. you conclude, how can guys follow you? Where can guys get your music and everything? You can find me on uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Amani Gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, something something is coming up this year? Or in threads, yeah. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> at Amani Gospel. Okay, you yeah. threads? Mm. Are you on TikTok? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am on TikTok too. So are you releasing any music this year? Yes, I'm definitely releasing music this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we should watch out. Yes. Okay, sawa sawa. Thank you so much. Kindly pray with us Thanks, even sir. as we conclude. Yes. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this evening, thanking you for a lovely day. We glorify and magnify your holy name. You have been Ebenezer. You are a great God, and we thank you and we give you all honor and praise. Father, we remember, O oh Lord, O oh Father Almighty, for the lady, O oh Lord, who, um, Father, she is struggling with her children and would like a source of income. Lord, we pray that you may remember her that father almighty you may open doors for her oh lord we pray that you may break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron yeah. and even open up for her oh lord oh father almighty a job that she will sustain and will move her from glory to glory oh lord oh father be her provider oh father almighty give her knowledge give her wisdom and even where to search for the job oh father almighty if she is excellent in business oh father almighty and that is her area father give her the ideas give her the capital oh father almighty and even give her divine helpers and divine connectors oh lord oh father may they look for her may they call her even for the glory and honor of your name oh father lord oh father concerning your daughter who's working at the flower farm oh lord we pray that all grace will abound towards her having sufficiency in all things that she father almighty will abound for every good work that as she works there she will be effective she will be swift in the mighty name of jesus give her the grace to even be swift in the mighty name of jesus lord oh father almighty may all grace abound towards her that she will be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath Yes. that lord oh father almighty even when they do the evaluation they will tell her congratulations you have done well yes. for she shall be the head and not the tail oh father almighty for that is our portion even in christ jesus lord we thank you we give you all honor and praise and we magnify your holy name even in advance for we know that you have already answered this prayers oh lord we thank you father You are a wonderful God. Yes. And thank you Jesus, you're a wonderful savior. Thank you Holy Spirit. We give you glory. You are wonderful. In Jesus name we do pray believing and trusting. Amen. amen. Amen and amen and amen. Wow, it's an amazing 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 night in the praise of God and uh I want to say thank you so much for joining us uh tonight and uh God has been super super gracious. But even before I forget, Amani. Mm-hmm. Uh any special shout out? You know because I know your family is listening you have to do this before you <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my family wherever yeah. you are mm-hmm. mommy if you're listening hey mama uh-huh. and dad if you're listening hey, what time is it <laughs> <laughs> but yes uh-huh. to my parents hi love you mm-hmm. yeah what special message to your fans to my fans um yes jesus is the way the truth and the light wow Mm. That is awesome. Yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for coming. Thank and you may for God having bless me. you. And may God bless you too. Amen. And thanks for having me. Amen. And now may the Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and forevermore. Amen and amen. Good night and God bless. 96.9 FM Pearl Radio.